Hey guys, and welcome to my fourth year video. I'm so incredibly sorry for such a long absence this time. The fact is, my computer failed. I mean, it just died. And it has delayed everything by at least five weeks, trying to get things up and running again. And it's a pity because I was really looking forward to getting this review out early. Uh, for fans who have been waiting for this, this is a Sideshow Triceratops. And it's special for three reasons. First, it's a Sideshow collectible, and that's always exciting to see what they have to offer in the Dinosauria line. Um, second, it's an original, a brand new sculpt. Sideshow has released some repaints this year, which are exciting, no doubt, for those of us who missed the train the first time around, but this one is new. Now, Sideshow did also produce a new T-Rex, but I didn't like the posture of that animal. And seriously, I have close to zero space now. Um, so I gave that a pass. Uh, and thirdly, it's a Ceratopsian, one of my favorite types of dinosaur. Now, the first thing that strikes me is how incredibly massive this statue is. Um, that's what I'm going to call it, a statue. I wasn't even sure I was going to review this. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to do it, probably with lots of cuts. So I apologize in advance. Uh, look at my Carnotaurus sideshow and you'll see immediately it has an almost grey style look to it. Uh, lengthwise, they're both about 20 inches, but look at the volume on the Triceratops. It's even more impressive compared to the first Triceratops we had with the Triceratops vs T-Rex diorama. No shared line like this time. This is unapologetically the star, a fully grown adult, a dangerous animal, and the entire form and flow of the lines warn you of it. Triceratops is of course well known. Even my family or friends who have no interest in dinosaurs know it. And as you expect for a Ceratopsian, the initial focus is going to be the head, so let's start there. The Triceratops belongs to the Chasmosaurine group, and this is brought home by the small frill and the massive brow horns. The nose horn is small as it should be, and I like that there is a bifid appearance as if some healing has taken place after an old injury. I like that kind of natural detail because it's not a picture perfect ornament and it's clearly an animal that has seen use of its horn for real life purposes. There are also grooves which is a nice detail. Now these massive brow horns are the main features and they are in your face. In real life, they could reach up to a meter or about 3 feet and the massive nature of these weapons is very clear. Uh, I just love the sinister curvature ending in a terminal point and it starts at the base with some grooves and then transitions to this perfect smoothness. The color fade and the sheen makes it incredibly lifelike. Uh, you have to be careful with these though because a couple of times I hit them and I thought I was going to break them off. Now the frill. When Triceratops was discovered, the first instinct was to jump onto the shield and spear metaphor and assume that the frill was for protection. Then came the realization that many Ceratopsians actually had quite lightweight fenestrated frills, hence useless for defense. But Triceratops had a solid neck frill and Fossil evidence suggests that in its case, there was a definite protective function to this device. Now, there are shades of color, uh, but they are not overly garish. There is a light ochre uh, surrounded by dark ochre markings, hinting at its possibility as a visual device. But assuming this is a female, it does make sense that this display color would be muted and not as vivid as on the male. Uh, the detail really is marvelous. The level of detail reflects the advantages of a larger scale model. Uh, there are different texture and scale types. And these are peppered throughout with scutes. And along these frill ridges, some of these scutes are so pronounced as to almost be suggestive of osteoderms. The eyes are a nice gold color with a black pupil. And there's plenty of nice detail to be admired. Uh, each epoxypital here, for instance, is individually detailed and different. Uh, there is no mass production shortcut here. Every one of them is di distinct in its own way. 
Other nice detail include the stretch marks on the cheek and there is also a dewlap here. One other nice thing is the fleshing out of a real animal. Uh, for example, I like very much the jaw musculature here under and behind the epidural. Uh, most reconstructions often forget that powering this deadly beak was real powerful muscle. The beak itself is a characteristic ceratopsin feature and I like very much the very sharp look, uh, almost scissor-like uh, feel of this structure. I would not want to be a T-Rex whose arm got caught between those two slicing surfaces. Now taken in totality with the brow horns, the nose horn, the epoxypitals, and all these scutes and perhaps osteoderms, the head really has a very knobby and bumpy appearance. Now bumps and muscle, these are two things that characterize this animal. Now, while I've certainly seen reproduction of the body with scutes, the level it's taken to on this model is almost to the extent of body armor. Now if you've shown me just this part of the animal and asked me for a reflexive guess, I would have said Skeletosaurus. Now as far as I know, uh, no body armor has been found uh, so some artistic license was taken here. I'm not complaining. Uh, I think it adds some degree of balance and general interest to the entire animal and not just a head. I must say that I am relieved that they didn't uh, <laughs> they didn't go to the extreme of bestowing quills on this magnificent creature. And as for musculature, powerful beasts require powerful engines to operate. I think that people sometimes forget that Triceratops was huge. How huge? Well, it was huge compared to other Ceratopsians. It was huge compared to a modern animal we consider big like the African elephant. And it is damn huge compared to a human. So it's fitting that the sculptor has given this animal a heavy set, ponderous appearance with white hips, thick neck and tail supported by pillars. And these pillars are adequately massive legs. Now, you know, you sometimes forget when you look at a smaller model like this, um, exactly how massive these legs had to be in order to support the weight of the animal. Now, everything is thick and massive from the shoulder to the legs to these very toes. I really admire the sculpt of each individual toe. Splayed out uh, convincingly under the weight it has to support and showing signs of wear and tear. For instance, here you have what looks like a spit hoof that has healed and really just gives you the, it conveys to you the impression that this is an animal that is truly lived in. As expected, there are the right number of digits on each foot, uh, four toes at the back and five at the front. And in fact, the only small thing I might nitpick about is that I understood that digits four and five were vestigial and not weight bearing. And there should in fact be no claws on those two digits. But really when you consider everything in total, there is just nothing, you know, nothing that you can justifiably complain about. Um, Look, for example, how the mud actually gets squished out by these toes as the foot takes the weight of the animal. Really, really remarkable. Now, all this convinces you of a realistic mechanism for weight bearing as well as sudden propulsion. And the readiness to charge is hinted at in the postural attitude of this animal. I'm dangerous. I'm ready. Do not mess with me or somebody gonna get a hurt real bad. Uh, the base itself is really quite plain with some fades, but really there's nothing uh, to write home about. Uh, for some reason, Sideshow has now added this layer, this black layer in its new issues, which I really don't like. It's unnecessary, 
It makes the whole thing much heavier than required for stability and it increases the overall footprint of the statue. Uh, of interest are these two loose pieces over here. Um, what are they for? Well, they actually cover these holes. There are two holes there. And what are they for? Well, that brings me to this guy here. This is the Sideshow exclusive version and I got this because I fell in love with the baby in these pictures. And you have this guy, the loose stones come off and in goes this little fella. Now, it's with the baby that I'm really a little bit disappointed. Um, you notice in the prototype, uh, the banded color scheme in the back, the light colored limbs, the different fades of light ochre and earth in the face, frills, um, the basis of the horns. Well, guess what? You're only going to get that under very specific types of lighting. Uh, you'll see in the end photographs of this video that I've used 5200K lighting, but it is definitely not representative of how it will look under most normal types of lighting. Instead, what you really see is um, pretty much one dark mass. Uh, you know, you don't really make out any detail and I think that is a real pity. Um, because if you look closely, there is actually some very nice texturing on this little guy. But without the colors uh, to actually bring it out, you're not going to <clears throat> appreciate much of it. Still, that aside, as underwhelming as this little fella was, the Triceratops itself is so wonderfully sculpted and it's so highly detailed, it's iconic features done justice to. I mean, just, just look at that, you know, it's incredible. Um, and then with the interesting speculative risk taken by all these armor plating here, the armor and osteoderms, um, in the end, I have to give this a thumbs up. Was there ever really any doubt? Um, the realistic anatomy, the morphology of the legs, the posture, everything works together to imbue dynamism, majesty, badassery, and life to Triceratops. And I recommend this wholeheartedly. Get it now before prices increase if you can. Uh, and if you can't get the exclusive with the baby, hey, it's not that big a deal. This will be a worthy Ceratopsian to add to your collection. So that's it for now. Um, time flies and it's hard to imagine that despite my tardiness with videos, the video count does creep up with time and who knows, 50 might be just around the corner. Next time, I promise I am going to be doing a McFarlane Dragon again. See you soon.